Hey everybody, welcome to the week. This week we are talking about housing um, and how that connects to both mental illness and the criminal justice system, which are all a big cluster of one big issue that gets really gross and um, put together. So for this week, I really want you to think about that sort of, of stuff. What have you learned about the criminal justice system? What have you learned about mental health? What have you learned about trauma that is um, preceding both of those sort of, of issues? And now how does all of this culminate in homelessness, right? When people are mentally ill, when they have a criminal record, when they are using substances, all those sort of things. Well, one of the biggest things that we see is a lack of stable housing. Um, that is a, a big issue, particularly when we think about sort of lack of funding for transitional care services and other sort of, of things. Um, this week, I want you to watch a couple of videos. The first one is going to be talking about sort of um, mental illness and, and criminality for a lot of uh, of media and social society and other sort of, of things, people have this idea that the the mentally ill are scary, scary people who are going to hurt you and, and they're criminals and all these sort of, of things. When the reality is actually people who are mentally ill are much more likely to be um, subjected to criminal behavior than to be perpetrators of criminal behavior. They oftentimes are targeted by um, a lot of people. So by people who just find them to be unsavory, they are targeted by police. They are targeted by well-meaning sort of, of people to try and, and get this idea that somehow it is, is not okay to be mentally ill or to be a former criminal or to be houseless. And so it's an important sort of, of thing. We know that to help people with mental illness, the biggest predictor of success is safe, secure, stable housing. If we can get people into safe, secure, stable housing, give them meaningful connections, give them purpose in life, then they're much more likely to do better. However, a lot of things with criminality and mental illness and substance use are preventative of those sort of, of things. One of the, the concepts I want you to learn about this week is called NIMBY. So not in my backyard, N-I-M-B-Y, NIMBY. NIMBY means it's this uh, idea that like, yes, we want to help people who are mentally ill. Yes, we want to help people who are substance using. Yes, we want to help people who are, are trying to reform from sort of criminal justice, but we don't want them in our backyard. We don't want them in our offices. We don't want them living near us. And the NIMBY phenomenon is this idea that we, we do want to help people, but that thing that we're proposing to do, we always want it to be far away from us and something that we don't have to be impacted by. And that's a really important sort of, of concept. Um, there is some um, articles and videos from the Coalition on Homelessness in San Francisco. San Francisco is one of the, the largest areas of homelessness uh, in the, the nation, and we have a lot of, of progressive organizations that work on work on different sort of issues around there. Um, and so I think it's a really good sort of case study about these sort of things. One of the things I... Um, don't like about teaching virtually is that that we miss a lot of the sort of back and forth talking about different sort of, of things um, because Chico is another place where nimbyism, housing and homelessness and mental illness and substance use all comes to a big head. And so a big part of this course is often talking about sort of the historical perspectives of what has happened in local Chico politics along with sort of what is currently happening. Um, and so there's a lot of, of really good sort of, of information in terms of, of we have a front line sort of picture for what is happening in the current state of housing and homelessness and all these big picture sort of, of issues. So I have some TED Talks for you to listen to and some other sort of, of things to look at um, that I think are really important that give you some context and framing. And then I have some examples in the, the lecture slides about some of the rhetoric that has gone on specifically in Chico over the past two years around um, the houseless and, and the mentally ill and talking about these sort of, of things. We, um, we being coalition of, of social justice advocates have worked really hard on trying to establish more access to low income sort of of low barrier shelters. And that's been fought every way and every step of the way by sort of local Chico NIMBYs. And so we have had this long sort of, of history of things that has really um, progressed to make it a really hard situation uh, here in Chico. Uh, local elections swing wildly from sort of progressive to conservative each way. This recent election just swung back to um, conservative and all of it was based on sort of housing homelessness, substance use, 
um, and criminality. And so a lot of the issues that we're talking about this week are very relevant to local sort of politics. And so um, there are some, some pictures and some different sort of graphics in the lecture slides that talk about those sort of things matched with the ideas um, of, of what's going on uh, nationally in terms of housing and homelessness. So it is a, a big issue. It's something that I'm passionate about. Um, so you have a lot of videos and, and readings this week to accompany those. Um, I hope you are having a good week. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the semester. Um, your moment of Zen this week is tapping. Tapping is a, um, it's part of, of DBT, that dialectical behavioral therapy um, stuff. And so there's a great video on, on tapping for anxiety that I think you might enjoy. Again, just giving you more tools in your toolbox to think about ways that you can handle stress uh, in your life. All right, I will see you later. Bye.